this month, inshallah, the, the topic is the uh, Juma prayer, Friday prayer. And what we'll do, inshallah, is go through some of the etiquettes of what, what is to be done uh, on the Friday, what is to be done during the Friday prayer, what should one do, what should one not do, um, etc. inshallah. Uh, I've given you a handout, uh, which we'll make available online also, uh, which covers some of the hadith that relate to this topic of the, the Juma prayer. Um, so first, firstly, uh, what is the Juma prayer? Uh, the Juma prayer is the prayer that offered on a Friday. Uh, it's offered in congregation, uh, and it replaces the Zohar prayer. So every other day of the week, um, we pray Zohar, and this is the early afternoon prayer. But on Fridays, uh, instead of praying Zohar, we pray um, prayer of Juma. Uh, which, is, which has to be offered in congregation. Juma prayer cannot be offered alone. Um, some of the things to note about the Juma prayer is uh, it is an obligation on all men uh, to go for the Juma prayer. It's not something that uh, is, well, if I feel like it, I'll go. Uh, if I don't feel like it, I won't go. That, that's not um, the case in the case of Juma prayer. It, it is an obligation uh, for every male uh, to go for the Juma prayer. One needs to have made arrangements with their employer to, to arrange to get some time off during the lunch time uh, um, to actually go for, for the prayer. Uh, for women, it is not obligatory uh, to go for the Juma prayer. Um, and Islam recognizes that uh, often women have other obligations, um, attending to children, uh, etc., etc., where it may not be practical for them to go. So there is no obligation on women to go for the Jummah prayer. Uh, if they so choose to go, uh, then that's good enough. Um, the Jummah prayer, uh, on, well, firstly, on the day of Jummah, if one is going for the Jummah prayer, one should have a bath uh, in, in the morning. Uh, one should take, take gusul by themselves. Uh, one should wear um, clean clothes uh, on that day, uh, and if they're a male, they should wear some, some perfume uh, when, when they go to the, the, the masjid. Um, when one goes to the masjid, and this is a general rule, um, if one leaves the home in a state of wudu, uh, then every step that they take on the way to the masjid uh, is a reward for them. Uh, so it's always better uh, when you go to the masjid to, to make wudu from home uh, and then journey to, to the masjid. Um, the structure of the Juma prayer is, is as follows. Um, there are two azans that are made for the Juma prayer. Okay? So normally every other salah uh, we have one azan. Okay? But the Juma prayer, there, there are two azans that are made. Um, so the first azan is made um, usually at the start time for Pajama, start time for Zohar. Um, then the second azan is made uh, just before the Imam starts the sermon. Okay? Um, the number of units of prayer um, in the Juma are, are as follows. So normally when one arrives at the masjid, um, when you arrive at the masjid uh, for any prayer, or any time you arrive at the masjid, uh, it is um, the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to first offer uh, two rakat, uh, sunnatul tahiyyatul masjid. Okay, so this is the, the prayer for, for greeting the masjid. Uh, so this applies not just on the day of Juma, uh, but any time you, you go to a masjid, it is the sunnah to, to offer these uh, two, two prayer. Uh, then after the azan is called, the first azan is called, you, you pray um, four rakat, Sunnah. Okay, just like we pray for Zohar, you pray for Akkad Sunnah. Uh, now, the difference with Zohar is that in Zohar, we pray for Akkad Farad okay, in the congregation um, with the Imam. Okay. In Juma, instead of the four Akkad Farad, there are two sermons plus two Akkad Farad. Okay, so the four Akkad of Zohar is replaced with two rakat farad, and that's preceded by two sermons. 
Uh, and then after the farad, um, one offers the two rakat um, additional sunnah, uh, and then any nafal they, they want to offer afterwards. So that's the structure of the, the number of rakat in the sermons. Okay? So we have you pray two rakat when you enter the masjid, before you sit down, four rakat sunnah, uh, then the two sermons, then the two rakat farad, and then the two rakat sunnah. Some of the etiquette uh, when one attends the Juma uh, sermon is, is as follows. The, t the two sermons are to be considered just like the prayer. So we talked previously that during the prayer there are certain things that we should not do. So for example, one is not allowed to talk to people during the prayer. Uh, one is not allowed to wander here and there uh, and be engaged in, 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 a, in other activities. So just like those things are an obligation during the prayer, the same applies during the sermons. So one is not allowed to talk. So if you enter the masjid late, the sermons are already in progress, um, then one should not speak. Okay? Just like when the prayer is in progress, one doesn't speak. It, the same applies when the sermons are in progress. If somebody says, you shouldn't say Assalamu Alaikum uh, when the sermons are in place, in, in place. And if somebody says Assalamu Alaikum to you uh, and the sermon is happening, you should not reply to them. You should just, just be silent. Uh, if other people are talking, you should not even uh, say to them to, to be quiet. Okay? You, you yourself should just focus on the sermon. But, I mean, even if other people are talking, just like when you're praying, if other people are talking, uh, behind you, you wouldn't get up and uh, tell them to be quiet. The same applies during when the sermons are happening. Uh, you treat it just like you're in the prayer. Uh, you don't talk to anybody um, at all. Uh, instead, you focus your attention on, on the sermons. The other name for sermon is uh, khutbah. Okay, so the other, the other term that's used here is khutbah. Um, what happens during the sermons is... Um, between the two sermons, um, the Imam will sit briefly uh, and usually make a short dua uh, and then he'll stand up for the focus on things which are happening around the world. He may focus on an aspect of we need to um, re remind ourselves about praising God, remembering God, rem remembering those people who are less fortunate. It can cover a whole broad range of, of, of topics. Um, in practice, in this country, uh, in this part of the world, um, there are two ways in which um, the Juma um, sermons are, are, are delivered. Uh, there is um, one school that says that the sermons um, have to be delivered in Arabic and only Arabic. Okay? Uh, and there is another school that says that the sermons have to be delivered in Arabic, uh, but if English is incorporated within the sermons at that time. As long as you've got the certain aspects, uh, as long as Quran is mentioned and Hadith is mentioned in Arabic, then uh, if there's English incorporated in there, then, then that is fine. So in practice, um, you'll find that the, the Juma uh, prayers um, tend to follow one style or, or the other. Uh, within this this part of the world uh, to enable people to understand the meaning of the Arabic because many people uh, many Muslims uh, cannot understand the meaning of the Arabic so one way is that um, the, the two sermons are delivered um, in Arabic and included in the sermon in Arabic will be um, a reasonable component of English uh, to help people understand the meaning. Uh, so that's one way it's done. The other way it's done uh, is that the sermons are, are given completely in Arabic, but preceding the sermons, uh, there will be a short talk that might be given in, in English. Um, that short talk that's given that precedes the sermons in English is not the actual sermon itself. Okay? So the rules that apply during the sermon don't necessarily apply there, 
but it is good etiquette to, to be quiet and be attentive and, and listen to that talk in English, um, even though it's not part of the, the, the sermon. So I just wanted to clarify that depending on which masjid you, you go to, um, you may find that it's done one way or, or, or the other. But the, the actual sermons, um, one has to be quiet, one mustn't talk or engage in any conversation, um, etc., etc. Um, one of the things to note about timeliness um, with respect to Juma uh, is that the angels record the names of everybody as they come for the Friday prayer. So as people are coming for the, to the Friday prayer, uh, the angels stand at the doors and they're recording everybody's names uh, who, who is coming for the Friday prayer. Once the Imam stands to deliver the sermons, the angels also sit down. So it's very important that for your name to be recorded in the list for that Jumma Khutbah, that Jumma prayer, you arrive before the Imam stands to deliver the sermons. Okay, so, um, the proper etiquette is to arrive early for the Jummah prayer, uh, to be engaged in some zikr, some remembrance of Allah, to make dua, make supplications. Uh, this is the correct uh, etiquette. You shouldn't arrive at the last minute and, and leave at the last minute in, in a hurry. So take your time. This is a very special time of the week. Um, there are verses of the Quran, Surah Juma, for instance, talks about the importance of leaving what you are attending to on that day. Leave your business, leave your work, okay? Uh, and go for the um, Friday congregation. Okay? So we have to leave, uh, this is for males, for women, it's, it's, it's voluntary, uh, but for males, you have to leave what you're doing um, and go with that sense of urgency uh, to the to the Friday prayer. Uh, I'm going to go through the hadith. Uh, I've, I've got about eight hadith here on the on the handout. Uh, I'll go through these in, in, in turn, inshallah. Uh, the Prophet wasallam said, the Friday prayer in congregation is a necessary duty for every Muslim, with four exceptions. A slave, a woman, a young boy, and a sick person. So these are these are the exceptions. Um, the traveler also falls uh, as an exception. If you are traveling, uh, you're in great world in a journey, then um, you also have this uh, exception. Um, the Prophet wasallam said, it is a necessary duty for every adult person to go for saying the Friday prayer. And for everyone who goes for Friday prayer, washing is necessary. So again, as I mentioned previously, one should make the ghusl, uh, have the full bath, uh, wear the clean clothes, and for a male, uh, he should wear perfume uh, when, when going to, to the masjid. Women uh, should abstain from um, wearing perfume uh, when, when going to the masjid. Um, the Prophet wasallam said, he who leaves the Friday prayer continuously for three Fridays on account of slackness, Allah will print a stamp on his heart. Okay? So this is a very serious offense. Okay? If you miss three Friday prayers in a row, okay, this is a very serious offense. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here that uh, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is, is saying here that Allah will print stamp on your heart, make a seal on your heart. So the closeness that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will become even more difficult for you uh, to regain that close relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, if you miss three Friday prayers consecutively. Very, very serious. 